Gotta have that coffee kick in. Hashtag not sponsored. Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of The House Spouse. I'm Neil, your host, and today's episode we are going to hopefully rebuild for the last time the carburetor for Lumpy. And if you don't know who Lumpy is, Lumpy is my 1967 Ford Mustang. It has a 289 V8 engine and it came stock with a four barrel carburetor. However, it has since been replaced with a Holly 4160, which I have already removed. As you can see here, I've covered up the hole because we absolutely do not want anything falling into the engine. So let's get started. Shall we? I have uh, opted to work inside today because it is a little chilly out there. It's about 35 or so. I don't have heat or electricity in the garage, so I'm working. Shh, I'm working in the kitchen. Don't tell my wife. Yeah, she might not like it. Hey everybody, uh, sorry to interrupt like this, but I really need to clarify a couple of things first of all again i am not by any means a professional at rebuilding carburetors i am not a professional mechanic at all i'm completely an amateur you will see many mistakes that i make not just in how i do things and what i do but also what i call things i know that i'm very upfront about that that's part of why I made this video is because I had no idea what I was doing so I know there are other people out there that have no idea what they're doing hopefully they find this video and learn something in other words learn from my mistakes <laughs> I made them hopefully you won't uh, another thing I need to tell you is this is a very long video I did my best to be as in-depth as I could Along the way, I had some technical issues. Primarily, my camera continued to run out of battery. Um, that being said, the total process for me took me roughly six to eight hours to do the teardown and rebuild. Another two to actually reinstall the carburetor. So all in all, about a day and a half of work in tearing it down, rebuilding it, installing it, testing it, making sure everything works. Knock on wood, everything works great. So whatever I did, I didn't screw it up too bad. Unfortunately, those techno technological issues that I had mean some of what I filmed what I thought I filmed, I didn't actually film. The biggest miss was the secondary, I think it was a secondary uh, pump, no, secondary diaphragm. It, it's a pain in the butt to put it back together, but it's possible. And what's the last thing? Oh yeah, I said it was a very long video. We're talking an hour and 45 minutes. So this is not something that you're just going to watch in two minutes and know how to do. Like I said, I tried to make it as in-depth as I could. So if you can make it to the end, hopefully it will work for you just like it worked for me. I'm happy to try to answer questions in your comments below, but like I said, I'm not a professional. I'll do my best. That's it. Back to the show. Thanks for watching. As always, I appreciate it. Until next time. All right, so uh, I know everything's a little upside down for you, but it is right side up for me. I have a few things that I've brought inside. Uh, it's kind of all disorganized at the moment, but I have some tools, uh, a new part, uh, parts kit 
uh, my carburetor obviously and some torque wrenches and some old parts and some very hopefully helpful instruction manuals but um, first thing is obviously you take the carburetor off the car you take it off your engine block which I have already done and I have already drained the gas out of it otherwise it wouldn't be inside the house with the gas drained out um, it's a little bit easier to handle without getting too terribly dirty it's not a very greasy piece on your engine if it is greasy you probably have some issues uh, taking it off there's only four bolts four nuts that come off of the uh, top of the intake manifold and then it just comes right off there is a gasket so you want to be sure if you have to scrape the gasket you want to be sure positively sure none of that gets into the engine uh, and also you want to make sure nothing period gets into the engine uh, otherwise you're going to have a much much more expensive project on your hand so let's uh, let's get started here all right you take your carburetor off I had these very small raggedy scratched up looking nuts that were a 7 16 and there's uh, four holes so one two three four you might be able to see the white arrow there I put that on to point towards the front of the car just as a, a uh, hopefully helpful way to remember which way is which so anyway you, you've got four nuts that come off and the first mistake I made was sticking it like this on a workbench they actually tell you to get some bolts so I did I got four bolts these are just uh, 516 by 516 bolts 18 by 4 and what you're supposed to do is put a nut on it like so and then it will set up like a leg and then you stick another nut on top to uh, tighten it down so it's kind of a kickstand to help prevent scratching the bottom of your carburetor so that was the first thing I learned I did wrong so I'm gonna fix that right now and these weren't very expensive I just went to the local big box hardware store and purchase them and I'm just going to make sure they are all even now I can hopefully manage to get it to stand up and I will take four more nuts and stick them on here just so that they don't come sliding out now on top of this I also purchased some lock washers and uh, I purchased a set of four extra nuts and four lock washers uh, because my thought process was 
I didn't want to use these as a uh, as a set of nuts that I use to reinstall. Uh, I'm sure this is a little overkill. Now I'm not going to crank these down or anything. I just want to tighten them up a little bit. So that I know it'll stand up straight. All right. So the next thing is to essentially take everything apart and again there's a, a few lessons that I've learned along the way mostly to pay attention to where stuff is attached so you'll see there's a mark there that's where the throttle came and attached and then the return spring was here now the first time I took it apart it was because this um, over here was leaking. I fixed that. However, when I put it back together the second time, it was leaking here. So I took it apart a third time and then I tore this gasket in here because as I was uh, politely informed in uh, somebody else's video, don't stick a screwdriver inside because you're going to tear your gasket, and that's exactly what I did. But every time I put it back together, I did not torque everything appropriately, and I noticed some of the gaskets had spread, mushroomed, whatever you want to call it, which is not the right way to do it. Now, again, I am not a professional, so I am quite positive I will use the wrong terms. So... We'll situate this so you have your front here. Four barrels means you got four holes here. This is a throttle side. This is your choke. Gas comes into your front or your primary bowl and your secondary bowl and then goes in here. Now there, there's all sorts of words and whatnot that they use to describe different things. And frankly, I don't know the names. I don't know that I really care other than I just need to make sure everything gets back the way it was to begin with. All right, so when your throttle goes forward, you'll see here, and I'll turn it so you can maybe see. So when you accelerate, see this here pushes this down, and it rocks this part up. And that is where my leak is, or was. Let's, um, let's take one of the bowls off, give a, a better view inside. That may help some too. Uh, there is a, a part missing here. Um, this actually, this goes in between in, into these holes. Here you can see here, it's supposed to go in here to here. Uh, when, when I took this bowl off, I just didn't stick it back in there, that's all. Alright, so these are already loose. And they take a uh, 5 sixteenths. Now, this is where your fuel comes in. This screw here... That'd be my dad. <laughs> 